What's up everyone, it's Shirt Talking, welcome back to my channel, we are back for the second part of Farming on Leon Arc. We are now on the second part, 1.2.1. This stage here has enemies weak to blunt, but also cold, and the first wave cannot be instant killed, but all the other ones can. So this is actually a very good place to farm if you are bringing the correct units. And we have Magia Fight Formation. We only need one fast attacker in the back. That is Al Kaiser. Albert is in the front line with his IQ strategy, and this is enough to finish the waves. And we can bring three trainees. This is one of these uh, stages that will be very good for farming status, since it's a fast attack and Albert will go before the enemies all the time. That makes it super easy to bring trainees in the middle, and they won't interfere. Now the second and third wave we can instant queue, so it's gonna be easy. Victor's Blade. Don't even need his intelligence back, because his formation already increases intelligence to help out. And that's it. The next strategy brings Rainbow Rangers, and we have characters that will do good damage in three waves. There is Cordelia, she's gonna use a Sprinkle. Uh, then there is Perfect Royal Kaiser, I inherited Punishing Fist. And here on the top we have Assault, he's gonna use Diamond Dust twice and then Bubble Burst for inheritance. You can bring two trainees. So uh, Punishing Fist is gonna go first because his attack is on agility position. You should bring trainees with low agility so they don't interfere. Sprinkle. In this case, we finish it the the enemies without a problem. So Vasat's gonna use Thunder Hail. He is the strongest attack. It doesn't change anything. But you can also inherit his fast attack. It's better. So if he skips turn 1, he's gonna use a fast attack that it's not random chance. The next strategy brings Deadly Pierce Axe Formation, since the enemies are weak to blunt as well. I'm bringing in the Prefactory Media with Total Shot Inherited. There is also T260G, that works pretty fine for two AoE cycles. And we have Rook in the middle, because he's gonna help out with AoE as well. Just increase on Cracker to 14, and you have two training slots. So, Deadly Pierce X helps out by giving increased turn order for the Gunners. They will kill the enemy, Rook will not attack. It's nice to have formations that you can predict what's gonna happen with the order. Now Rook is gonna attack because C2-6CG doesn't have enough BP. It's good because that allows him to kill the both enemies. One with the AoE hit and the other one with a single target hit. And he loses HP, allowing him to do more damage with AoE on the last wave. Now we have AoE, but the weaker one, Total Shot. Well, we got a combo, you don't need this combo, it's too much. You even see how much we'll get from the AoE, from Rook. It's gonna be like 70,000 or something. No, 60,000 or something. But that's strong enough, we don't need that much to kill these enemies. Now moving on to the next stage. The stage here is easy because you can instant kill the first and the last wave. All enemies can be instant killed, so you need help with the second wave. And we are bringing the Magia fight formation with Albert instant kill strategy in the front line. And in the back line we have Fuse, the second version it has air support. He's gonna kill all the enemies and then Albert is gonna instant kill the remaining ones. You can bring three trainees. There we go. Albert's gonna instant kill the first wave easily. One is gonna affect the turn order. Now it's a fast attack coming from Fuse. He's gonna get an increase in damage. He does not kill by itself, but Albert finishes with damage. Now it's all about Albert instant killing all the remaining enemies. Another one that works is the same formation, same strategy, but replaces Fuse with Vassalt. In Vassalt we have Torrential Storm inherited from his premium style, and increase Thunder Hail so that it does not clash. 
I guess some other characters will also work, like Leon or someone like Coppelia, if you use Artemis Soul, they probably gonna work. Torrential Storm is safe. It is not so fast animation, but not too slow too. Now the last wave, super easy. They don't have much will. We got a combo, don't need that. The next strategy brings Rainbow Rangers. We have Joe in the top. It can be either Joe 1 with her El Nino or Joe number 3 by use of the 6 BP attack. Then there is Rook on the SR position. He's gonna use Hammer Roll. And on the Agility position, we have the last version of Ken Ryu that can attack three times with his Hybrid Fort. We don't need any other characters, so two trainees on this one. So Joe and Ryu are gonna kill the frogs. They don't have that much HP. Seventy thousand was enough to kill them all. Now Joe and Ryu will keep using this uh, combination of attacks. It is not enough to kill the enemy, so Rook is in need of AOE attack. Hemero. Pretty powerful. We got a combo, but it's not needed. These characters are not even training. Now the last wave is a combination of all their attacks. Moving on to the next stage, this stage here has enemies without too much HP, but the first wave cannot be instant kill it. The second one has a mix between enemies that can and some enemies that cannot. And the third wave, all of them can be instant kill it. Now, uh, the first strategy is all about the damage. They don't have too much HP and there is a combination that works well. You just bring the latest version of Cordelia, but you need Big Wheels Plus from her school version. Uh, leave everything else on the normals and then you bring Rick together and they will do enough damage maybe you will need an AoE helper in the end but I won't and you can bring three trainees here these enemies don't have too much HP Rick is gonna kill them by himself now on the second wave we have big wheels big wheels is extremely powerful these enemies don't have any weakness the Rocky. So now what you have is the damage from Rick. Fire Flash. My trainee attack it, but it doesn't matter. Last wave is just Gecko and Rick. That's it. Even if it's non weak to fire, the attack from Cordelia help it out, and only two characters, three trainees. Next strategy brings Magia Fight Formation with Bertrand in the front line. You're gonna need Frost Quake, increase the Lock to 16. And in the back line, you need Matriarch number 3 with her Gleaming Way to kill the enemies. You can also bring two trainees on this one. So, Frost Quake is a very powerful attack. And we have help from Matriarch to help out with a little extra damage, meaning that we get PP back. So we can keep using Frost Quake. This is a very good combination that I use a lot of times in this uh, Leon episode. Having a way to just get BP back is one of the best alternatives to Albert strategy. In this case, this rock is revived, but it was very small difference. My cards are not fully maxed yet. This is just gonna be easier with the forged weapons. The last wave doesn't have much uh, HP. Now for the last strategy on the stage, we can bring Ice Damage. Uh, I have an Stream Formation and I have Creator here in the front line. He can also use Lightning, this one is also uh, hitting the weaknesses of the targets. And I brought two Ice Mages with full AoE cycles, Mr. Thing with 9 BP and 4 BP. And I have Global Axion Dean, I needed to inherit Ice Javelin so that she keeps her AoE cycle. Two trainees on this one. 
creator he'll do good damage right from the start and he can even sometimes just chase his attacks oh he didn't chase doesn't matter in this case we did overkill damage second wave we have those enemies that don't have any weakness so good that we still have the powerful attack from Yunzin, but it always works it's three characters attacking much better results third wave they have lower HP so even easier well this is not needed all dead next stage is stage 1.2.4 this one you have enemies weak to pierce on the first wave they can also be instant kill it then on the second wave we have enemies that cannot be instant kill it and they are only weak to heat but they are super weak to heat but they also have like 100,000 hp it's gonna be a little harder than the other stages so i believe you should be focusing on heat damage and that's what i'm doing with enemy mystery information it has uh, the latest version of creator on the front line he has heat damage and can even chase for extra damage but he's not required then i have the latest version of will in the middle with his saga ninja attack increased burning beat to seven so he does not clash and i also have apollo with inheritance of meteor swarm for perfect aoe cycle two trainees here well we got a combo but we don't need that it's too much damage they are already dead. Second wave, we still have the best attack from Apollo. It's gonna use twice now. And on the last wave, even with their weakest attack, they can still do it. Now we have Fireball Plus, Meteor Dust, we even got a combo, but it's not needed as well. Another way to do fire damage is to bring Rainbow Rangers. Uh, here on the top I have this Polka with Soul Burn and Fire Plus inherited. There is also Rick, he's gonna use his normal cycle, and Dora with normal cycle as well. Uh, it's easy and you can bring two trainees with this one. So Rick and Dora will be strong enough to finish the first enemies. Even through they are not weak to heat, doesn't matter, they don't have that much HP. And now this version of Poker is gonna do a lot of damage, his AUE attack, it's double S, he loses HP, that's why. 92,000. And Rick with Fire Flash is gonna finish. Now we have Fireball Plus with Polka. Uh, alongside AoE from Dora and the weak AoE from Rick, it's gonna be enough. That's it. Another mage party that you can bring uses any mastery, and you can place uh, or illusion the front line. He debuffs agility and will help out. And purple flames here try to increase his agility to the max because he needs to attack first or else he breaks his cycle. Then I have blue in the middle, he's gonna do a lot of damage with his Divine Fendance, increase Waking Dragon, and then there is also Vagnus. Vagnus is good now that he has access to Fireball Plus, so he can double attack, and the damage will be good. And two trainees. Okay, so our Lurus is gonna attack first, and he can stun the enemies. Now is a combo of the other ones, Butterfly Blaze is powerful. Does not need to chase. The enemy has close to 60,000 HP. And it's not weak to heat, but now we're gonna attack with heat. They will be able to do enough. Sometimes Vagnas do extra damage, but it's not required. Now, last wave. Purple Flames, they don't get stunned, but doesn't matter, still die anyway. Now moving on to the last stage, this is a boss stage, it's not easy, we have enemies that are weak to 
Blunt, Sun and Heat on the first wave, then on the second wave is Blunt, Lightning and Shadow. Different. The only thing that still stays is the Blunt weakness. And the boss is weak to Blunt and Cold. So yeah, try to focus on Blunt, this is the easiest way to do this. But the first strategy mixes out. We have an Amazon Raid X formation with Rapina here. We're gonna use something very different. Holy Shine is worth and then inherit cross break. Leave Sun Flash on 5 so it does not break. Then we have Rook in the front line. He's gonna use Hammer Roll. And there is also the Perfect Roll Kaiser. Increase Final Crusade to 9 so that he does not heal Rook. And he's gonna use Son of Phoenix and then Sparkling Roll. You can bring two trainees here. So there we go. Two fast attacks. Son of Phoenix. And Holy Shine is worth. The good thing about this is that with Holy Shiny's Word, we can determine the Rook won't attack. He attacked here because he's on a combo, but it won't matter anyway. Doesn't even lose his HP. But now he's gonna attack with Hammer Road twice, and we'll not be using the best attacks from Alkaiser and Rapina. They are gonna save their best ones for the boss. With that and the combination of all of them together, you're gonna deplete that HP bar from the boss. My Rook is not even maxed and we can do this. Hammer roll. See? Rapina just finishes with her attack. Whoa, the enemy survived, but not by much. Just a scratch and it's dead. Another combination that you can do alongside Rook is to bring the third version of Matriarch and focus on Shining Glory. Do this. And also Snowy. You're gonna buff two times. He's gonna use Circulating Hail. And Rook here is on the back and he's gonna use Hammer Roll as well. Two trainees. So what's gonna happen here? Shining Glory goes. And then you're gonna kill the enemy with... Circulating Hail. It always goes before Rook because Rook has low HP anyway. If he combos, it doesn't matter because he does not lose HP, does not use BP as well. Now, the second wave is just then using their normal attacks and Rook using Hammer Roll. Similar to the first strategy, just different characters of support. And this is the last wave, boss stage. We're gonna buff Rook two times, so let's see how much damage he does. This is gonna be fun. Circulating Hayu and now Hammer Roll. Let's see if we can deplete all HP or not. If we don't, it's gonna, yeah, leave it very close to death. Well guys, that's it. This is the last strategy. Keep farming. We need new weapons to go for the new events and also the Remembrance events. They can be pretty hard and challenging. So, I hope this can help you. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you want to support the channel, there are links in the description of the video. I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye.